Hi, my name is Aguilda Jimenez, and I've created this student-facing video that focuses on the independent practice portion of the grade four, unit three, day 16 through 17 lesson entitled, Choosing Sides, Patriot, Loyalist, or Neutral. Hi friends, thank you for coming back to Social Studies. So we're going to continue to think about the events that led to the war with Great Britain. And today we're going to um, identify whether colonists were patriots, loyalists, or neutral when it came to choosing a side. Were they supporting the Sons of Liberty and the, the colonists? Or were they supporting the British soldiers and the King of England? Our lesson objective is to explore hypothetical scenarios and secondary sources to explain how a person's identity, who they are in colonial America, impacted their perspective on the patriot and loyalist causes. All right, so here's some vocabulary from the introduction of our lesson. We have patriots, loyalists, and neutral, insurrection, independence, and treason. And some big ideas I want you to hold on to as we're going through the lesson are that your identity, who you are, the job you have, or how you see yourself helps you identify as being a patriot, a loyalist, or neutral, meaning you are not on either side. Not all colonists were patriots, and not all loyalists were against patriots. They just believed that it was possible for British soldiers and colonists to live in um, the colonies peacefully. Okay, so let's just review this timeline of events. Already, just by looking at the timeline, you should notice that there are a lot of things on this timeline, right? And these things represent all the events, all the acts, the taxes, the meetings, um, the things that were published to show evidence of how the relationship between the colonists and the British soldiers and the British government got to where it is at this point in history, right? So you should already have this idea that, yeah, a lot of the colonists do have good reasons for feeling the anger they do towards the British government. So for your work today, first, we are going to read about what our who are patriots, loyalists, and who are people that were neutral, right? We're gonna get an understanding of what those words mean and how to categorize um, colonists under these labels. And then you're going to read three scenario cards um, about three different colonists and your job is to think about the information you're listening to or reading and decide whether this colonist would be a patriot, a loyalist, or are they neutral? And what evidence from the source are you using to support the label you chose? Okay, so let's think about who were the patriots, who were the loyalists, and what did it mean to be neutral, right? So if you'd like to pause this video right now and in on your Google Slides, in your Google Classroom, you can listen to the audio um, of the description of the Patriots. And then what I'd like you to do is using your own words, describe what a Patriot is, right? A Patriot is, a Loyalist is, a person who is neutral is. You can jot down your notes on your Google slide. It was already assigned to you. Or you can jot them down in your notebook um, and take a picture and submit it. Um, but understanding who the patriots, loyalists, and who people that are neutral are will help us understand um, the independent practice, the assignment, and it will help us um, categorize colonists under these labels, right? So pause the video. And when you are done listening or reading um, these three cards, you can come back and um, we can finish the rest of the work.
Okay, guys. So now that we know who patriots are, right? Patriots wanted the British soldiers to leave the colonies. Patriots wanted to make their own government, make their own rules. They didn't want British soldiers telling them what to do. And then loyalists, right, were people who did not want to do their own thing, right? They wanted help from the king. They wanted the protection from the British soldiers in the colonies. Um, they thought, you know, why can't we have both? Why can't everybody just live in this land in peace? We think it's, it's possible. Okay. And then people who were neutral, right? Um, they didn't really have an opinion. They just lived their lives and thought, listen, whatever happens, happens. I'm just living my life. I'm following the rules and I'm just fine. Right? Now, something that you should have noted were that loyalists do have this character trait, right? They tend to be wealthy landowners or they were clergymen, they worked in the Church of England, um, or they had businesses or politics um, with Britain, right? So loyalists had a characteristic that they were rich, or they already had a good relationship with the King of, of Britain or England, same person, same land, um, and the British soldiers. Okay, so you have the option of listening to the three, the first three cards. And then what I want you to think about, okay, on your Google Classroom, in your Google Slides, write the collins number, okay, highlight, or you can circle or underline, do you think they're a patriot, loyalist, or neutral? And what is the evidence from the colonist card that you used to support your label, to support your thinking. Okay, let's do an example together. Colonist one. Colonist one is a poor farmer in the Hudson Valley of New York. Colonist one has paid no attention to the trouble brewing or starting in the colonies. His day-to-day -day struggle to maintain his farm and family is what worries him and what he thinks about. His problems have recently become worse. His landowner, who's a loyalist, has had some financial or meaning money troubles and to get himself out of his enormous debt has raised Colonist One's rent three times in the last five months. Colonist One barely earns enough from selling his crops to pay the original rent amount. And now with the raise in the rent, he will be kicked off his farm. He and his wife have six children and they need to take care of and they need and they are worried that they will have nowhere to go if they are forced to leave the farm. So let me think right here. I have some sentences that can help me think about who this colonist is, right? How could I describe this colonist? This colonist is a poor farmer who's in New York, right? And his rent has been, is getting more expensive. He has to pay more money for where he lives because the person that owns the land, he's a rich loyalist, but he owes somebody else money. And so he wants to pay his debt by making this poor farmer pay more money for where he lives, right? And Colonist One also has a big family. He has six kids that he has to take care of and a wife, um, right? So Colonist One has a lot of problems. He may not have this colonist problems that he may not have a place to live pretty soon. So I'm thinking, right, if I go back, is he a patriot? Um, right. Do I think that this farmer might feel that British laws violated or broke their rights as British citizens? 
Um, It says here, colonists who were in debt, who owed money with British creditors often became patriots since they hoped winning the revolution could get them out of paying back their debt. So I think maybe this farmer might be a patriot because he feels what's happening to him is unfair and the owner of the land is a loyalist. Or do I feel like this farmer is a loyalist? Notice how... I'm going back to the card or I'm going back to my notes that I took on what a patriot, loyalist, or a person who's neutral is, right? Let's see. Loyalists um, were wealthy landowners. Colonist one doesn't own land. He's poor, right? Does colonist one have business or political ties to Britain? Mm, no. Does colonist one um, agree with the taxes that the British government has imposed on the colonies? I don't think so because he's poor, right? He doesn't have any, it says here, right? Bar he barely has enough money from selling his crops to pay the first rent, okay? Um, hmm. Does he believe that the Patriots were the enemy? I don't think he has those thoughts because it says here, colonist one has paid no attention to the problem that was starting in the colonies. He's just really minding his own business. Let me see. Do Is colonist one neutral? Okay. Do not agree with either side. They were undecided because they believe the peaceful resolution without having to choose a side. Um, is this colonist scared? Is he in religious? I'm thinking even though he's not paying attention to what's happening, I'm thinking that because the landowner is a loyalist and because the, lo the landowner has raised the rent so much um, that now this poor farmer may not have a place to live or a place for his six children and wife to live. He probably thinks everything that's happening is really unfair. So I'm thinking maybe this colonist is a patriot, right? So on my card, I might say colonist one. I think he's a patriot, right? And I think... Why do you think the colon my your colonist would choose this side? My colonist is a poor farmer who isn't making enough money because the owner of the land is a loyalist who has raised the rent three times. This colonist is worried he won't have a place to live or food to feed his wife and six kids. He thinks what's happening is not fair. This makes me think that he might be a patriot. Okay. So again, notice the steps I took, right? I listened to or read the card and I used these sentences to help me describe who the colonist is, what the problem they're facing is. And I put that together to help me think about, I went back either to the notes I took or these 
cards defining patriot, loyalist, and neutral. And I thought, does this colonist fit more with the description of a patriot, a loyalist, or neutral? Okay, guys, so what I want you to do is I want you to do the same work with the other cards that are assigned to you on your Google Classroom. And you can fill out this organizer to show your thinking, or you can record an audio of yourself answering what colonist number your colonist card you're talking about, how you label that colonist and why. You can record a video on Flipgrid if you like. So you have those three choices to submit your work. Actually four choices because you can, if you wanna jot this information down in your notebook and upload a picture, that's also fine. Thank you for coming to Social Studies today. See you next time.